Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we exalt you today, oh God. We give you honor today, Lord God. Father, we bow before you today, Lord God, for you are our Lord. You didn't just save us, but you watch over our lives. Everything that we need, everything that should be in our lives, you supply, Lord God. Lord, we are following hard after you, and we are humble to be your servants, humble to be called by your name, humble to be called into your house, humbled, Lord God, that you would share this burden of saving the world with us, oh God. Lord, we don't know why you made it that way, but you have called us into the kingdom, Lord God. God, so that someone else will know about you. So tonight, Lord God, we're going to lift up your name. We remember what you've done. We understand the depth of your suffering, but yet in it, Lord, there was still love. All day, still love. You gave your life that we might be saved. So Lord God, we say thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Lord, we are going to learn from you. We're going to understand from you, Lord God, that when we face the situations in our lives, we turn our attention towards you. What you did, God, we ask him for the strength, for the courage, for the understanding, for the wisdom, for the anointing to follow after your steps. For you, God, showed us how to be saved. You showed us the way back to the Father. So, Lord, this night, Lord, we're asking that you would pour out your spirit, Lord God. Lord, that you would move mightily in this place, Lord God. Lord, for your name's sake, for your glory's sake, Lord God. Lord, you, Lord, you, Lord, deserve to be worshipped. You deserve to be worshipped. You deserve to hear praises from your people. You deserve, Lord God. Lord, and we understand from your word that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. And we bow now and we confess now that you are Lord. We give you all, all oh God. And our desire, Lord God, is that whatever time we spend in your presence, oh God, Lord, that you, God, will be pleased. Lord, that someone will hear that there's a people that love their God and are loved by their God. Oh, let them be inspired to worship you, inspired to seek after you, for you alone are God. So bless this service, Lord God. Bless your people, Lord God. Bless every speaker, Lord God. And we won't fail. We won't fail to give you honor because of it. We won't fail to thank you for it. We won't fail to lift up your name, oh God, for you are our God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Good Friday service, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How we know that God is good and just, yeah, good, good. Nobody did that all the time, right? God, you, we just got to acknowledge that God is good. That's it. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I am held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Everything your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I'm gonna sing Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Pastor, can we do Shepherd? Can I? Can I? Can I? If possible? Okay. <laughs> It should be down at the bottom. All our eyes on you, Lord. All our hope in you, Lord. All our trust in you, Lord. All we want is you, Lord. All our eyes on you, Lord. All our hope in you, Lord. All our trust in you, Lord. All we want is you, Lord. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our helper. 
Oh, Jesus, lead us and show us the way to follow you. only you, Lord, all our hope in you, Lord, all our trust in you, Lord, all we want is you, Lord, all we want is you, the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our helper, oh Jesus, lead us and show us the way to follow you.
You know, um, in a world where everyone uses the word Christian to mu mean a whole bunch of stuff. And there's some people that's calling themselves Christian, there ain't no way in the world they read the Bible. <laughs> and they most certainly don't know who Jesus is. Because they could not do the things they do and say the things that they say and still claim to be a Christian. Because the word Christian was the name for the disciples of Jesus Christ. So being a disciple of Jesus Christ means that you have committed your life and the way that you live according to his principles. You build your life according to the things that he taught. Well, uh, sorry to tell some folk that it's not all about naming and claiming. It's not all about getting what you want. It's not about speaking it into existence. Because if we're going to share in the glory, we got to share in the suffering. Yes. So being a disciple of Jesus Christ means we got to learn how to go through the same way he went through. We got to learn how to go through in the same spirit in which he went through. Yes. 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 It, it's not by mistake that the Gospels record seven different words that the Lord spoke from the cross. And from those words... What can we learn about going through? See, I worry about my stuff, and my stuff is real for me. <laughs> my hurts, my pain is real for me. But I could never look at the Lord and complain that he's asking me to do something he didn't do himself. And when we see him on the cross, the things that he said, shows us how to go through. So tonight, it is my pleasure again to introduce the speakers to give the seven cries from the cross. Yes. Now, the Lord speaks to all of us according to our own understanding and the place that we're in. So if you listen, I'm sure you're going to find something that relates to you. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Well, the first thing, the Lord spoke about was forgiveness. So we're going to have our minister in training, Derek Anasta, come and give a word for the Lord. Good morning, church. Oh, good. That's how your nerves, nerves are kicking in a little bit. You know, so... So before, uh, before I start, uh, when I got the infamous text that we usually get around this time, I was just like, oh, okay, I must have I did well last year that they, they're bringing me back. <laughs> so before I start, I just want to start out in prayer. Uh, Father God, just thank you for this opportunity to be here. Father God, just thank you for an opportunity to speak on this momentous week, this momentous seven days that we or have experienced in remembrance, Father God, of all the sacrifices of Jesus Christ, Father God. Father God, just ask that. The words that I speak today that the audience and the church know is coming from you. We have so precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Father, forgive them. So this is uh, Luke 22, verses 33 to 34. I'm reading out the NIV. Um, when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So let's just, for a second, just sit and think about how we would feel in that moment. To be surrounded by our accusers, the Roman soldiers, and the crowd who were there shouting to see us nailed to a cross. How do you think you would feel being falsely accused? I know that I would, I would be highly upset. Yes. <laughs> Um, knowing all the miraculous things that you have done, for example, the healing of a large crowd, uh, bringing the blind to see, having the lame to walk, and the deaf to hear, that is discussed in Matthew 15, verses 30 through 31. That's just one example of the numerous um, miracles and sacrifices that Jesus Christ made. Um, I can honestly say that I can think of every feeling or emotion in the book, but forgiveness in that specific situation wouldn't be one of them. <laughs> but as we focus on Jesus' state of mind, 
we see that instead of thinking of the predicament he was in, he displayed understanding, yes. which is only a depth of what we could only aspire to have. He recognized that all of those people in the crowd were either acting out of ignorance, fear, or manipulation of others. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. 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 Jesus' forgiveness wasn't about condoning his accusers' actions, but it was about recognizing their humanity and their capacity to be redeemed. Jesus, even in his suffering, extended an olive branch of love, which is a testament to the boundless nature of God's grace. I'm pretty sure all of us could sit here and think about all the scenarios where we felt like something was done wrong to us, where we were the quote-unquote victim, where we felt in a position where we just focused on all the wrongdoing that was done to us. But in this situation, no matter what Jesus went through, he still put himself in, other, in the other's shoes. Okay. He had empathy, he provided grace, mm-hmm. he provided understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just want everybody to understand that this passage is just more than a historical account. Mm-hmm. It's a call to action for all of us. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. I asked the church, how often do we hold onto resentment, mm-hmm. allowing bitterness to fester in our hearts? I know I've definitely been one of those people. <laughs> Um, better yet, how often do we struggle to forgive those who have wronged us? My belief is that Jesus' act of forgiveness is a challenge. It compels us to confront our own capacity for anger and resentment. Uh, it asks us to see the world through the lens of compassion to understand that people make mistakes, sometimes even grave ones. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean blind acceptance <laughs> at all. <laughs> It means acknowledging the hurt while choosing to release negativity. Uh, it means to replacing resentment with openness t- to reconciliation. Uh, now, I'll be the first to admit, following Jesus' example is not always the easiest thing to do. <laughs> but forgiveness requires a certain level of strength that you need to be able to look past yourself and focus on the scenario in itself. But forgiveness also liberates us. By letting go of the burden of anger, we open ourselves to healing and peace. We create space for a transformed heart, one that reflects the love and forgiveness so profoundly shown by Jesus being on the cross. So family, ongoers, people who's viewing the live, let's be inspired by Jesus' sacrifice. Let us choose forgiveness, not because it's easy, but because it's the path towards a life that honors his teachings. Let us extend compassion even when it's challenging, uh, for that is the truest reflection of the love that flowed from from Calvary. And lastly, if you didn't get anything else from this message, (laughs) I'll leave you with this last food for thought. You'll never understand a person's stance until you spend a moment in their shoes. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo. 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 You know, you know when somebody been through some stuff. <laughs> when that's when that word get real. Hallelujah. Well, we continue to follow our Lord's example that not only did he show forgiveness, he actually remembered someone else. It wasn't about him. He told the criminal on the cross today you will be with me in paradise so we're going to ask our brother malachi hallelujah let us just um quickly pray father we love you we thank you Uh, We thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for moving by your spirit. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I am going to uh, be speaking from uh, Luke chapter 23, verses 42 through 43. 
23. So Luke 23, verses uh, 42 through 43, and it reads, And he said unto Jesus, uh, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Today, not yesterday, uh, not tomorrow, but right here, right now. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now, faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Psalms 118, verse 24, uh, it says that this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Now, right now, is the time of salvation. It's interesting that Jesus would say, today, Jesus, you're hanging on the cross with me. It looks like you're going through the same thing that I'm going through. The other uh, criminals, they were laughing and mocking, but this particular criminal saw something significant, even in Uh, the depravity and the suffering, I imagine that he must have looked into the eyes of Jesus and saw the love. Hallelujah. When he heard, hallelujah, him forgive those who were uh, attacking him Uh and crucifying him, something touched his heart. Hallelujah. And he, hallelujah, Acknowledge the Lord, and the Lord acknowledge him, uh, just whosoever, the scripture says in Romans 10, calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So today, right now, you, hallelujah, he said that, hallelujah, he identified, hallelujah, that today that you, and you, And you, and you will be with me in paradise. Mm, I think of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. For he didn't come to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. That's it. Mm. That's it. He did it all for you. Yes. If you are the only person, mm, hallelujah, on the planet, he would have done it for you. Mm. So this day, right now, you will be with me. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. That's encouraging to me. Hallelujah. In other words, you have VIP status. <laughs> oh, I can remember some times uh, b- b- before Christ when I was with going into certain venues, <laughs> hallelujah, was with certain people and that I ordinarily wouldn't have been able to get into the venue, but he with me. Mm, hallelujah. You're with Christ. Ah. You are with Christ. You are with me. You are getting in the paradise on my ticket because you can't get in any other way. You are with me. Uh, uh, He's with me. (laughs) This is one of my own. Glory be to God. Uh, He's saying, I got you, (laughs) man. Security. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 13 and 5, he says, I will never leave you 
nor forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. I will be with you low even to the end of the age. Mm. So this day, today, you will be with me in paradise. Ah, ah. Paradise. Yes, girls. Hallelujah. Paradise. Ah, now, I've been to, as the locals say, Hawaii or Hawaii, and it is beautiful. Hallelujah. For somebody, paradise may be Jamaica, Bermuda, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Aruba, Fiji, the Bahamas, Bora Bora, Tahiti, the Virgin Islands, a lot of different places. Now, I said I wasn't going to get to, into a lot of theology, but the Greek word here for paradise is Strong's uh, 3857, and it's paradisos. Paradisos. Paradise is a place of blessedness. And here's, here's what's interesting. From the base meaning, it says of garden, of a garden. So is there's, there's questions in some theologians' minds. Is this the Garden of Eden? There's some theologians in their scriptural uh, context in Luke 16, 22, that speaks of this being Abraham's bosom. It was the place where the Old Testament saints went um, prior to Christ being crucified and, um, and ascending and, and placing his blood on the mercy seat of heaven and opening the door of access for the saints to go to heaven. But here, here, here's the thing, whether uh, we don't have to get that deep. <laughs> Here's the thought I had in regards to paradise. Mm. Whether the uh, Bahamas, whether Hawaii, Tahiti, imagine your ideal paradise location. He says, this day, you're going to be with me in paradise. God, mm, this is what he really wants you to know. In Psalm 16 and 11, the scripture says this, Jesus, oh, I feel you. Thou wilt show me hmm, the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Glory. Ah, at thy right hand. Ah, ah, I, ah, our pleasures forevermore. Here's what he wants you to know. <laughs> Wherever he is. Ah, that's paradise. Glory. Oh, glory. Wherever he is. And he says, this day, hallelujah, today, you're going to be with me in paradise. And Eba, whoo, it's only paradise, good God almighty, hallelujah, because his presence is there. Ah, oh, because his presence is there. So this day, today, you and you and you will be with Jesus in paradise if you only believe and receive him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Today. Today. So for anybody that was considering whether they've done too long, too wrong for too long, think about this guy. He was on his way out. And the Lord invited him in. So as our brother just said, today, today, some of you hearing this today need to hear, today is the day. Don't wait any longer. Just accept him now. That thief didn't know anything. All he knew was this man was something different. So just remember me. So for those that don't know Jesus, it can just start with, Lord, remember me. Remember me and watch what he can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we continue to see the love and the mercy and the grace of our Lord. And the next cry from the cross is, <laughs> he wouldn't be right if he forgot his mama. <laughs> our sister Josette, come with behold thy God bless you all, Amen. and thank you, Jesus. Behold thy mother, yes. John 19, 25 to 27. 
And I'll just read, the, read these verses. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. As I read and reflected on this scripture, I began to imagine Mary's emotions. Yes, yes. As she looked across at the son that she gave birth to being crucified on the cross. I mean, it's not even something you can imagine. I started thinking back about how it all began for Mary. She would have been about as young as 13 or 14 years old, engaged to Joseph. Back then it was a legal contract to marry Joseph. And the angel Gabriel appeared to her saying, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And Mary was probably wondering, what in the world is going on? How can I give birth to a son? I'm a virgin, and he will be what? He will be called the son of God? I have an agreement to marry Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just believed it, it. and said, it. behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. I think that the Holy Spirit gave her the revelation of the truth that was said to her. Amen. And her response was to praise God. Amen. 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 Saying, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior. Yes, yes, yes. Such great faith. Amen. Then I thought about how Jesus as a young boy, how Mary and Joseph could not find him for three days because he was about his father's business. <laughs> yeah, that's what he told her. That's what he told them. He was found in the temple, sitting with the teachers, listening to them, asking questions, showing a great understanding and knowledge. And then she started thinking of as a grown man, how he performed his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana changing water into, into wine at her request. Yes. Yes, yes. And she started thinking about all the miracles that he performed, that she either saw or heard about, and all the lessons that he taught. But there he was, being crucified on the cross, right in front of her. Mm -hmm. And her heart was broken. And Jesus looked at her and felt her pain. He wanted to comfort her, even as he was in a lot of pain himself. Woman, behold your son. And to John, behold thy mother. And what about John, the disciple that Jesus loved? I used to think that meant that John was Jesus' favorite disciple. <laughs> Until a few years back, I did some research about it, and I read that those words only appear in John's gospel. So, so that was how John chose to refer to himself <laughs> as the disciple that Jesus loved. And I was like, wow. I mean, that just stuck with me. Why did he do that? Because John believed that Jesus loved him. Simple. He had insight into that supernatural love that Jesus has for us. And he personalized that love for himself. Yes, he, did. Yes, he, did. he completely embraced it. Yes. And he surrendered to that unmerited, unearned favor called grace. Yes. That Jesus died on the cross to give us because he loves us. He loved us so much. John believed that and, he, and reminded himself of it every time he referred to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. And there John was, across from where Jesus was being crucified on the cross, 
with Jesus' mother, where else would he be? But where were the other disciples? Where were the other members of Jesus' family? Well, it made sense that John was there because John was secure and confident in the love of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. what happens. Yes, 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 yes. That's what happens when you totally believe and embrace the love that Jesus has for you. You trust him even when things are not going right for you. Even when you do not understand what is going on, you still trust him. Even when you stumble and fall, you know he won't forsake you. But we'll, we'll be right there to pull you up, pick you up back again. That confidence was stronger than any fear that John might have had of being recognized as one of Jesus' disciples. That confidence was stronger than any anxiety that he might f have felt about what they might do to him. He was there for Jesus. He was there for Mary. Yes, yes. He was already yes. in the role as the son to Mary. Mm -hmm. He was the only choice to have the privilege of the one to take care of Jesus' mother. What a privilege. We should all have that faith of young Mary. And we should all think of ourselves as the disciple that Jesus loved, yes. like John did. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. John got it. That's why he wrote his gospel as he talked about Jesus being the son of God, because he got who he really was. Now, I, I agree with you, sister, 100%. I'm claiming mine. I know Jesus loved me. I know I'm the disciple that he loved. Now, y'all got to work that out for yourselves. <laughs> and there, there is a case to be made that, well, John, out of Peter, James, and John, John was the only one that claimed that he was the disciple. <laughs> that <she Peter. laughs> So we don't know what those conversations was like 2,000 years ago, but somehow he got the impression, I'm the one that he loved. I'm the one that he loved. And when he had to leave his mama with somebody, he left him with the one that he loved. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as we suffer, as we go through, even when we come out of ourselves, and look for everybody else. There comes a time when it's just you and God. There comes a time when you need to have those really hard conversation with God about what in the world are you doing? Well, the Lord showed us that's what happened. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Our sister Patty Genera. Hello, everyone. So let me put on my glasses so I can see. So in Matthew 27, verse 46, in a loud voice, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's also recorded in Mark 15, verse 34. So it's recorded in two of the Gospels. I know most of you have heard me say that the study of Jesus's last days have been very intense, the betrayal the shady trial, the crucifixion, the death and the burial. It, it, was, it, it brought a new understanding to me. The amount of suffering he endured willingly while having the ability to stop it at any time has humbled me and often brought me to tears. Yeah. I am undeserving, yet he did this all for me. He did this all for you. So Jesus' cry on the cross occurred on the ninth hour of the day, about 3 o'clock. Darkness overcame the whole land as the sun stopped shining. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. There was a mighty earthquake. The tombs of the saints broke open. Surely this was not a normal event. As a side note, we're having a, a solar eclipse on April 8th. I did a little research. Normal time for solar eclipses are two to five minutes, not hours. I'm just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Upon meditating the crucifixion, I thought of Jesus' other words because they need to be taken in totality. Yes. 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, showing his tender mercy towards us all. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise, making a way for us because his desire is to be with us always. Dear woman, here is your son, here is your mother, showing that he is always willing to take responsibility for those that he calls his own. I am thirsty, showing us that although he is the son of God, he can relate to our physical needs. It is finished, showing relief. The work of our redemption has been completed. And Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He did what he came to do, and with a sense of anticipation, he will join God the Father. All such powerful words, and behind each you can see unconditional love for us all, never wavering, always constant, forever perfect. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What does forsaken mean? When someone is forsaken, they are abandoned in their time of need, causing them deep anguish and suffering. Forsaken denotes mental and or physical pain. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus is not crying out to an unknown entity into the sky. His cry is to his Father. His cry is possessive. My God, yes. my God. Yes. It is yes. personal and it is intimate. Jesus cried out in a loud voice. It wasn't a quiet breath prayer. It wasn't said in a low voice. His cry was loud, but it was not screamed. He was always in control. This was a plea that was ripped from the depth of his soul. Remember, only a few short hours previously, Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, pouring out all he had to his Father. He tells his disciples that his soul was overwhelmed to the point of death knowing that he would be temporarily forsaken by his father. This was not mild suffering. He sweat blood. Yes. Separation from his father was painful. We have to remember that Jesus was with God always. always. Think back to Genesis. Let us make man in our image. They were together before God, uh, time began, together in perfect harmony, never a disagreement, no need for a timeout. <laughs> I, I thought about this. Jack and I have been met together for a long time, including the time we dated, almost 47 years. Most times in harmony, but there have been some disagreements. <laughs> there have been some frosty silences. And the few times that we were apart were difficult for me. I felt sad, slightly off. We were separated, but I was not forsaken. Our love is real, but is nothing compared to the love between God the Father and, his, and Jesus. Amen. Why would, we, why would there need to be a separation? Why would Jesus need to bear, bear or endure the wretched grief of being forsaken by his Father? God is a righteous God, and as such, he cannot abide any sin. Would God be just if he let some sin slide? Absolutely not. Since God the Father is completely righteous and holy, justice, requires, justice is required for wrongdoing. Jesus the perfect Lamb of God took upon himself all the sins of the world yes, yes. so we can be reconciled with God. All past sins, all present sins, yes, yes. all future sins. Yes, yes. Can we even comprehend the magnitude of this? No, no, no. I can speak for myself. My sins are many. They are heavy. I've been aboard the crazy train a time or two. <laughs> Yet Jesus, God's perfect son, took all my sins. Yes, he bore my sins. Hallelujah. And because of this, as a child of God, I can go directly to the Father because God, uh, Jesus sees me as righteous through the blood of his son. Amen. Jesus did this all for love. He endured the agony of the cross, the torment of being separated from his Father. And for those he has called his own, we can rest in the knowledge that he will never leave us or forsake us. Yeah. Hebrews 13:5. <laughs> I will end with this. There was a gospel song 25 years ago by Billy James, uh, You Are My King. A few of the verses are, I am forgiven because you were forsaken. I am accepted because you were condemned. I am alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. That is true then, it was true now, it is true forever. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for me and for your love for all of us. I tell you, my, my heart is just tickled. I feel so good. Y'all been paying attention. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, just in case somebody thought that this was some fairy tale that was made up, the Lord expressed his humanity. For this was a flesh and blood man who had been hanging on the cross for over six hours at this point. So he said, I thirst. Uh, Sister Sharon Morrell. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm reading from John 19, verse 28 to 29. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, and, and said his fulfillment of the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was placed there, so they put a sponge soaked in sour wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. So he's saying it was, well, he had to go to the cross because it was prophecy, right? Okay. But does it really mean Jesus was thirsty? No. He wasn't thirsty for water. Jesus was thirsty for souls. Okay. When he was hanging from that cross and saw all those people that beat him, spit on him, told lies on him, he said, I'm thirsty. He took all the sins of the world and took it upon himself, be it all the pain of the world, and said, I am thirsty. So now with us, we, when we say thirsty, we're thinking water. I want potent spring, I want alkaline water, you know. <laughs> So I kind of looked it up. If you're looking for water that can help you digest, re reduce fatigue, give you skin booster, that would be alkaline water. But if you're looking for like hydration, something that tastes good, that was spring water. So what kind of water are you drinking? Are you drinking the living water? Or are you drinking the alkaline water or the pollen spring water? Okay? So. When people like my son, like if I'm asking him to do something, he's like, ah, oh, you thirsty. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's the urban, so I'm just like, urban dictionary, okay, thirsty, like you, keep, you want something really bad. I was like, no, that's not me. Uh-uh, that's not me. But when you're thirsty, people thirsting for a good position, they thirsty for relationships, they thirsty for likes on Facebook and Instagram. That's not the thirst Jesus was talking about. Jesus was thirsty for souls. He wanted you to get the living water. So I thought about the Samaritan woman. Um, when she, Jesus went to the well and said, can I have something to drink? And she's like, what are you going to pour it in? This is me talking. What are you going to pour it in? And then Jesus said, that was in John 10, Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who it, it, who it is in the, and that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you the living water. Yes. Hallelujah. So I was like, ooh, the living water. So when Jesus would bring you to a place when he was hanging from that cross and he'd say, I, I am thirsty. So it kind of took me back, Okay. I lost my mom, I lost my brother, and I lost my aunties. And it said, me, I said, I am thirsty. I'm thirsty for you, Jesus. Okay, not for no water, because at that point when I thought about myself when I was studying this, when Jesus was hanging from that cross, he was thirsty for us. So I was like, in that position, I'm thirsty for Jesus. I'm thirsty for the living water. So when the next time when you, you're out there and you're thinking that God don't love you, just remember and say, I'm thirsty. And next, when I'm saying I'm thirsty next time, I'm thirsty for God. I'm thirsty for what he wants me to do for his kingdom. Okay? But, and, by, and then I read in Psalms 21, he's, it was prophecy. He was quoting that. It was happening. You know? That's the living water. I said, ooh, the living water. That water will flow in you, okay? It will give you people, alkaline water, good for your skin. Well, Jesus is good for your soul, okay? 
All right? That pool of spring water is just for a minute, but Jesus, that living water is for eternity. Okay? So this is what I'm saying. When Jesus said, I'm thirsty, next time you close your eyes and you think about Jesus hanging on that cross, and when he said, I'm thirsty, he's thirsty for you. Okay? So we can go out there and be thirsty. Thirsty for giving God's message to his people. So that's being thirsty. So the next time my son said, I'm thirsty, yes, I am. I'm thirsty for God. I'm thirsty for saving souls. I'm thirsty for you, okay? And I'm going to close with this, okay? So in John 4, Verse 14, so whoever drinks the water, I would give them all. Give, whoever drinks the water, I would give them who would never thirst. Indeed, the water I give you will become and come in them as a spring of water welling up for eternal life. Amen. So Jesus' water is eternal life. So when he's saying he's thirsty, he's thirsty for your soul and for eternal life to spend with him in heaven. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 When we think about what is it that matters most to the Lord. What matters most to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are that important. I just keep hearing God. I have to remind somebody that you are that important. God cares that much about you. The Lord went through all of this so that we might be saved. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. And his suffering wasn't going to be forever. Just like our suffering is not going to be forever. There comes a time when it is finished. Our sister Marie. Amen. Amen. I have a quick testimony. So... Pastor, don't count this on my minutes. <laughs> go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> now, for I, I think about like two weeks, my ears have been blocked, and then I've done everything. I prayed, done everything that I could. I knew to do. They have been like I couldn't hear you. If you, if you, even if you were like fifty uh, step behind me, I couldn't hear you. But um, I, like I said, I've been praying. So today, I'm, you know, I know I'm going to be doing this. I said, Lord, I need to hear. <laughs> I, mean, like, I need to hear. But um, it's amazing. It's like a miracle. Whatever was blocking my ear, it was like around like 3 o'clock in this afternoon, that thing came out. Amen. And then Amen. I just praise God. God is faithful. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So yes, I thank Lord. God for his love and mercy. He is faithful. So it is finished, Jesus said on the cross. I'm going to be reading uh, from the NIV, John 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, I'm quoting Pastor. Pastor has said that God gave one rule to two people. They couldn't keep it. They couldn't keep it. And I don't think I could have, you know, keeping it either. So they let sin came in and separate them from from the love of God. So at that point, relationship, you know, between God and humanity was broken. So what was undone, you know, could only be repaired with the shedding of blood. God in his grace and mercy. He could have destroyed them, replaced them, like Pastor said all the times, but he, in his love, because he loved humanity so much, he chose not to eradicate them. Instead, he killed an animal and covered them with the skin of the animals, you know. But in, um, I, I was, you know, thinking about it 
So I read that in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, it says that the ceremonial law was the shadow of the things to come. That's right. So once a year, the high priest has to offer animal sacrifices on behalf of the people so we wouldn't be destroyed. That was the only way until Christ uh, came that God, you know, was able to keep us. Even then, the blood of the bulls couldn't satisfy the divine judgment required by the law of God. So what happened that Christ came, he offered up his life as a living sacrifice, doing what we could not do, paying a price that we could never afford to pay. He was slapped, he was stripped, stripped naked, beaten, spit on, mocked, all for our sakes. He fulfilled every single law, every single prophecy. And the book of Isaiah said it this way, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. So he took what we deserved upon him. With every stripe, he brought us healing. Amen. With every lash Amen. on his back, he brought us deliverance. Yes, yes, With yes. every drop of blood, the curse was broken. Yeah. It was removed. Relationship was restored. And then, after he drank the sour wine, he declared it. Finish. It is done. Yes. It is finished. And I saw that was quoted, that's one of the prophecy quoted in Psalm 69, uh, verse 21. It says that, and for my thirst, they gave me vinegar uh -huh. to drink. We couldn't do it. The blood of bulls couldn't do it. That's right. That's Through right. the blood of Jesus Christ, the path for our redemption was made. The Son of God came into this world for the sole purpose to destroy the work of the old serpent. Redemption, salvation forever. Forever sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. And the verdict of guilt, the, guilt, the guilty verdict was replaced with justified by yes, faith. Yes, yes, yes. So what is the takeaway from this? And that's the way I understand it. The takeaway is that God did not spare his own son from drinking the cup of judgment that we were supposed to drink. Instead, he gave him power, he gave him strength, to yes. overcome it. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the same way, think about it, God does not always remove our struggles. Right. He does not remove, uh, always remove our challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, but he gives us strength and courage to overcome every single struggle. Mm -hmm. And then in his power, we can stand in his might, we have power. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I think I'm going to take some Sundays off. Yes. <laughs> and let the Lord use you. <laughs> let the Lord use you, church. Let the Lord use you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, what, what tremendous comfort that the Lord finished the work. Amen. What tremendous comfort. Yes. And when he finished doing what he had to do, he knew where he had to go. So I, I love the idea that they didn't kill him. He just died. Our minister Jack told us that a few years ago. They didn't kill him. He just died. He chose the moment. I'm going to die now. They did everything they did, but he didn't die until he was actually ready to die. And before he did, he said, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. I'm Minister Ketia.
Amen, church. Amen. I'm so glad that I get to end the night with his last cry, which is Luke 23, chapter 23, verse 46. And it reads, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And as I was doing my study, I found commentary. And I noticed that a lot of them mentioned that this was Jesus' last prayer before he gave up the Holy Ghost. And when I read that, I thought about the beauty and such the simplicity in that. Those simple words of, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Sometimes as humans, as people, we feel the need to make things a little bit glamorous, jazz it up. You know, we gotta add all these special words from these other terminology, but Jesus kept it simple. He demonstrated the ultimate surrender, the ultimate trust, and the ultimate obedience to the will of his Father. Jesus' words revealed his complete surrender to the plan. Imagine being in despair or feeling like you're going through somewhere you don't know where to turn. How amazing is it to know that you have a father you can put it into his hands and commit it to him and knowing that he's going to take care of it. For many of us, we may have been in a situation in our darkest time and we might have committed ourselves to fear. We might have committed ourselves to anxiety. We might have committed ourselves to depression. But are we committing ourselves to the Spirit of God? Are we committing ourselves to the Father? Are we looking to Him to resolve our problems? Jesus showed that He was with God through thick and thin. And no matter what was going on, He was going to give it all to Him giving us an example of what it looks like to give it all to our Father. He knows what we're going through. He sees the pain, and it will not go unnoticed. So I encourage you to just give it to the Father. Give it to him. Give it your all. In the words of Ella Devon many, many years ago, but it stuck with me, she said, breathe your last breath on that thing and give it to the Lord. Breathe your last breath on that thing that is causing you heartache and give it to the Father. Jesus gave us such a simple prayer that we can keep on praying no matter what you're going through. A simple prayer, but the beauty in knowing that we serve a living God that will take care of it. A simple prayer, but it can bring rest to your soul, knowing that it's going to be done, that it's going to be taken care of. We serve a God that knows what you're going through. We serve a God that sees your anguish, your cries, but you have to give it to him to feel that rest and that ease. And after Jesus said those words, he was able to breathe his last breath. He was able to know and, and give us um, acknowledgement that it is in the Lord's hand. He didn't whisper it. He didn't say it quietly to himself, but he said it out loud. And there is power when we say things out loud. There is power in letting the enemy know that he has not gotten one over you. And there is power in letting the enemy know, I'm giving it to the big man upstairs. And once you give it to the big man upstairs, the devil can't do nothing right now because your father's coming down to take care of it, right? Your father's coming down to handle business. And when Jesus said it with a loud voice, he was letting those people know, my father's coming down to take care of business. It is done. This life that you are living, these traditions, it is finished. I had breathed my last breath. Like Pastor Jack said, he gave up the Holy Ghost, right? They didn't take it from him. He gave it up. He let us know that it was done, that he has completed the will of the Father. And he, these words continue to encourage us in this walk that when we find ourselves feeling like we're at the cross, give it to the Father. Put it in his hands. Continue to be encouraged by the cries of Christ. These seven cries are not meant to bring us despair, but it's meant to give us great hope and great joy. It is, it is a reminder that we will be victorious at the end of it, no matter what we got going on. Jesus died for us, for our sins, so we didn't have to suffer. He did it for us. Yes, yes. 
So in the midst of our trials and tribulations, commit your spirit to him today. Commit your situation to him today. Commit whatever you got going on, whether it's your loved ones, your children, your spouse, your friends. Commit them to the Father, and he will take care of it. Breathe your last breath and be done with it. And rest assured that the Father will take care of it. He got us tonight. He'll got us forever until our last day. Just continue to walk that faith. Continue to be encouraged. Continue to look back at the cross as a reminder that God loves us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've heard so much, and the, the, I hear a clear message from all of this, but we're going to ask our elder Devon now to come and just wrap up things for us. All right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all know it's Good Friday, so it's the happiest day for me. I love Good Friday services. They are the very best services out of the whole year for me. And so I'm always so excited. I'm always so excited to hear from everybody. I feel like I went, I went to like a little uh, buffet. <laughs> Got a, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> Amen. And I was just thinking like, wow, why do we have to keep waiting for Good Friday to, to, to do this and to hear everybody speak? But the pastor said he's taking some Sundays off. So all of y'all that, you know, had a turn, just prepare yourselves, right? Right? Prepare yourselves. So what do we learn? What do we learn this evening? What do we learn about what Jesus went through? Brother Derek said that we need to think about the wounds that we have experienced, right? Think about those moments where we have been, in, been injured and what did we feel, right? He said, he challenged us. Yeah. He said that we yeah. need to be like Jesus, yeah. Yeah. understanding our own capacity to be redeemed. Even though we may feel like some people are unredeemable, Right? He challenged us to say, mm-mm, that's, that's not like Christ. That's not, that's not being like Christ. He said that we have a call to action, right? We are called to action to let go of resentment. We have to be open to reconciliation so that we can be liberated. And if we're not feeling liberated, maybe it's because we need to let some things go, right? We're holding on. We need to be inspired by the example of Jesus to show compassion by forgiving so that we can experience that liberty. Amen? Amen. That was Father, forgive them. Brother Malachi reminded us that Jesus is with us right here, right now. Right here, right now. Amen? We can, if we can be like the thief on the cross and acknowledge God, then God will acknowledge us. Yes. Amen? Yes. Yes. He will acknowledge us. He will be with us. And we will be the VIPs. We will be the very important people, right? <laughs> I, I'm a VIP, okay? So that we can experience that security, right? We can experience that blessedness. And he said, reminded us that wherever God is, is paradise. Amen? Amen. 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 Sister Josette reminded us that we are blessed and highly favored, just like uh, the mother of Jesus. The same way that Jesus cared for his mother is the same way that he, that he will care for us. Amen? Amen? So we need to be like uh, the mother of Jesus and believe, right? She believed. When the angel came to her, she believed and had faith. So God will care for us. We need to be like John and proclaim that we are the favorites. We are the favorites. Amen? So we need to surrender to the grace of God with confidence and claim ourselves uh, to be the favorites of God and to walk in that assurance that Jesus cares for us. He loves us. Amen? Amen. 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 Our sister Patty said 
that we need to be humbled. We need to be humbled and brought to tears when we think about what Jesus went through for us. When we think about his unconditional love, right? And that Jesus belongs to us and we belong to him. Amen? We can think about the pain that Jesus endured as he took on the sins of the world so that we could be righteous, right? We could be made whole. We are never forsaken. We are never forsaken because, because we are forgiven because Jesus was forsaken. Amen? Amen? Our sister Sharon reminded us to think about what we are being thirsty for. Amen. What are we thirsty for? So many other things other than Jesus. But she challenged us to be like Jesus, to be thirsty for Jesus, to be thirsty for the things of God. And God was concerned about the souls. God was concerned about saving those that are lost. So what does that say for us? We need to be concerned about the souls that are lost. Amen? Our sister Marie reminded us that it is finished, right? And she was quoting Paso. <laughs> One rule to two people couldn't do it. Amen. She reminded us that that sin of Adam and Eve separated us, separated us from God. And that the blood of the animal sacrifices could not save us. So Jesus became that sacrifice for us. He took on that suffering. And Jesus destroyed the work of Satan. And he became that perfect sacrifice once and for all. Once and for all. We don't have to keep going into the temple again and again to make the sacrifices. It's once and for all. And because of that, we can rejoice that we are no longer guilty. We are justified. And in that, we find strength. We find courage. And we find power because we have been redeemed. Amen? Amen. 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 Our minister Kessia reminded us that we need to keep it simple, right? We need to keep it simple. Remember the beauty and simplicity, right? And we witness the ultimate surrender. We witness ultimate trust. We witness ultimate obedience when Jesus cried, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. So we need to be like Jesus, we need to say, Lord, into your hands, I commit to you every situation. She said we need to breathe your, your last breath, which I forgot that I said that, but amen. So now I'm going to receive it back from you, and I'm going to breathe my last breath on it, right, to bring it to rest and to give it to God. I'm giving it to God, and that in that we experience power, amen. And she said, my father is coming to take care of business. And so we need to stand in victory. We need to stand in confidence. We need to stand strong in the face of our enemy because we have a father who is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to set everything straight. Amen? Amen. So we can commit it to God. I hope that you were blessed by these cries as much as I was. And look, we should all go out of here rejoicing, fired up, ready to celebrate when we come back on Sunday and just praise God for the blessings and the good things that he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, family. How many years have we been doing this? We're not talking about Faith Christian Assembly. We're talking about just, yes, exactly, that many. And every time, there's always something good that comes from it. I am so blessed. I am so proud. You, look, everyone here that's been under my ministry know that the Word of God is the foundation. And we got to get that right. We got to get that right. Everything else is everything else, but we got to get the word right. And I am so glad that I hear God speaking through each of you. 
I hear God giving you revelation and understanding. That makes me so glad. So I know that the Lord is at work. And know this, that you will be blessed. Amen. Know this, know this. The work that you have done, all that you have poured into, pouring out tonight, the Lord is bringing it back for you. He won't forget the hard work you've done. He will not forget the hard work you've done. So hold on to that. <sighs> the preacher in the making right there, boy. I, I tell you that um, as I've heard throughout tonight, there's a consistent theme about the love and faithfulness of God. A consistent theme that no matter what it is that you're going through, and whoever's out there tonight listening to me, whatever you're going through, when you see what the Lord went through on the cross, can you feel his love? Can you feel how much you matter to him today? Can you feel that? It's not about just waiting until you get to heaven, but the Lord loves you today. And he cares for you today. And he wants to have a relationship with you today. This was the one who created all things, but yet he suffered at our hands so that we could be saved. At a word, he could have put an end up to all of this. At a thought, it could have been done. But he stayed on the cross and he finished the work so that I can be saved. So I want you to just bow your heads with me. I want you to consider the suffering that he went through so that we could be saved. And if you don't know Jesus, but you've heard something tonight, something touched your heart. You may not have a full understanding of what all of it means, but if this man did that for me, I want that man in my life. And he says, that invitation is open today. As soon as you say, Lord, remember me, that invitation is open today. So if there's one that has not asked the Lord into their life, I would ask that you just raise your hand and put it back down. Just as an acknowledgement, yeah, that's me. The Lord's been speaking to me. Those that are watching online, raise your hand. Say, that's, that's me. That's me. The Lord's been speaking to me. I, I don't understand it all, but Jesus Christ died so that I can be saved and I want to be saved. I've tried saving myself and I can't do it. But if he died for me, then I want to accept that salvation. If that's you, even those that are at home, just I want to help you with the words. They're not my words and you're not saying it to me. This is just between you and God. I'll just help you to put it in context. Dear Father, I know you sent your son to die on the cross for me. The sacrifice he made was what I should have gone through. But you said that I just have to accept your son. Accept what he's done. Believe that he is your son and that he died for me. So your word declared that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. So right now, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that he is the son of God who died on the cross for me so that I can be saved. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And because he is alive, I can live. So I accept that new life right now. I accept that new life right now. Lord, teach me, grow me, help me so that I can help somebody else. And I thank you. Now I just want to pray for you. Father, for those that have said that for the first time, God, I'm asking that you, Lord, in your infinite mercy and grace, would just wrap them in your arms, draw them into your presence. Lord, surround them by those that will help them to encourage them and strengthen them, Lord, and teach them how to follow you. Lord, protect them from the evil one. 
that would come and try to snatch this from their hearts, Lord God. Build a hedge around them, Lord. Encamp your angels in their lives, Lord. Lead and guide them into all truth. Lord, baptize them in your spirit, Lord God, that they can go forth in power knowing that you are with them. And I thank you. And I thank you. Now for the rest of us that have felt like we've been nailed to a cross, that have felt the pain and the suffering of trying to do God's will and not fighting back, not trying to retaliate against the evil world. I I want you to just stand with me. Just stand with me. If you've been under that kind of pressure, you feel it. You feel it. You feel it. And, and, and you know that if God didn't help you, you would be striking out against all those who's striking out against you. So, Father, we stand before you now, Lord. And we turn our attention towards the cross. We fix our eyes on Jesus. Lord Jesus, if you went through all of this so that I can be saved, if I've got to suffer so someone else can be saved, Lord God, I said, not my will, but your will be done. But Lord, I'm asking you for your strength. I'm asking for patience. I'm asking for help. I'm asking for wisdom. I'm asking for your hand to move in my life, Lord God, that as I face these things, I know you've already gone through it and you have already made a way and you've already been victorious. So Lord, I'm grabbing hold of my victory right now. I know, Lord God, that the suffering will not be forever. I know, Lord God, that it'll come to a time when I can say it is finished. Lord, tonight I'm breathing my last word on this, for I am committing my spirit to you, knowing, oh God, that my time of resurrection is coming. That the new life in you is coming, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being this example. Thank you for following the Father's will, completing the work, so I can grab hold of you as you have grabbed hold of me. Lord, continue to walk us into our destiny, into our purpose, Lord God, so that your name will be glorified in our lives. And we thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So Lord, as we leave out of here tonight, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength, and our redeemer. Bless your people, keep them, and bring them back together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What's up, everybody? This is Anthony Brown from Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. And I'm so excited to debut for you my brand new single, Worth, from the new project, Everyday Jesus. This song is so special to me because this song is all about love. It's all about, in fact, the greatest love of a Savior that would give his life for both of you and for me. I think in this world that we live in, we're reminded enough of what we'll never become, what we'll never do, and what we can't do. But I want you to know today that he thought you were worth saving. He thought you were worth dying for. He thought you were worth